This isn't what I want to talk about. This is what I want to talk about. Right? But in order to get to this, since I have no good reference point, I want to talk about something else very obvious so we can translate it. Look at this armor. It doesn't matter that it's German. It doesn't matter what time period it is. What's important are two factors. Whether it has too much metal and weight in unnecessary locations, and whether it has any gaps in vital locations. Okay, there's a very small gap here in the neck that might not be ideal. You can see the elbow has multiple lames segmented. They slide across each other, no problem. This thing here can drop into your armpit when you raise your hands, so this gap here is much more negligible. But also look at how small and tight these rings are. There's way more work that goes into these than goes into the average modern set, because these are much smaller than modern rings usually are. People don't pay attention to that. These are not too long, even though they're there at all, which makes it slightly less effective on foot, but that doesn't matter because this lance rest here shows us that it wasn't intended to be used on foot. Look at how tight these gaps are on the folds. Small little visor slit, couple hearing holes. There's mail on the neck. You know, everything very tight. All of the holes are covered. There's not any extra at uh, any extra metal where it, need, where it doesn't have to be, except for here. And in that case, it's like 20 grams, maybe 50 grams of steel. Completely negligible. Anyway, back to the two points. <laughs> Is there any extra material where there doesn't have to be? Well, let's talk about the chest plate. They have three layers of plates in the same location. Four. One here on the bottom. Two, three... Or, so this part is really well covered, right? That's the part where if you stab right about there, it'll shut down your whole arm. So it's a good place to be covered, you know? However, putting on four plates like that is going to be heavy. Real heavy, especially that thick. Oh my god, look at the shoulders. First of all, how far away from the shoulder it comes and how fucking thick. Thick it is. Look at that. It's like an inch and a half of fucking thick ass steel. One of those pauldrons is probably 20 pounds. You got 40 pounds per side. You've got another 100 pounds on your chest. Okay. So, yeah. Way too much stuff where there doesn't have to be. And vitally missing equipment. Right? Gaps where there absolutely needs to be not gaps the face for example his whole face he's got this extremely heavy helmet and nothing covering his face fucking nothing they went out of their way to not cover up his face his elbows also completely unprotected you could cut his arms off and it would probably be pretty easy because he's got these fucking 20 pound van braces just on one side of his arm but these parts of the arms can be completely encased completely encased so you can see here yeah see hinge there's a hinge there you can have two plates that completely cover your arm and look at how fucking thin they are look at how thin it is that is beyond absurd beyond fucking absurd this thing here probably weighs 30 pounds and it's being suspended on a belt with the tassets that are set on the side that are probably in another additional 40 pounds together. So you've got 70 pounds just sitting on your fucking waist for no reason. This whole situation, this whole entire waist situation here, maybe weighs 5 pounds. Uh, 10, maybe 10 pounds. That whole this upper situation probably 20 pounds so then put together maybe 30 35 pounds right all together and it's all tight on your body right 
Let's go to this guy. This whole upper situation, bottom side, not, uh, yeah, 70 pounds, upper side, just the torso, just this uh, abdominal protection, probably over 100 pounds. The shoulders, probably fucking 50 pounds together. The arms, probably 40 pounds, uh, 30 pounds together. So you go 50, you go 40, you got 90, you got 90 plus 70 is 160. 160 plus this is 260 pounds. 260 estimated pounds on this guy for my fucking brain you can do your own calculations i'm not gonna measure it but goddamn, that's not even calculating the mass on his legs or the male and all that to say that he still isn't covering his elbows his face and neck are completely exposed his hands are leather bound so take all that concept of too much material and not like vitals not being covered and let's go over here to this mining colony by Bernard, Bernhard van der Horst. Bernhard van der Horst. I don't know how to say it. Let's just be as excruciating as we were with that Skyrim look. These incredible dips have fallen into infinity. Look at how many gaps there are. This is supposed to be a... I can't actually tell if this is supposed to be a pressurized chamber. Because, just, just look at this, uh, fucking first video, right? Look at this shit. Right? Look at that, look at that door. Look at the way the door opens. And now, watch how it closes. When the robot is walking over it, these gaps are actually actively opening. See that? Don't you think that's a little bit of an issue if you're trying to walk on a floor and it falls out from under you, creating a one foot gap where your foot can slip into it right when the door's about to slam fucking closed like this? Nah, nah, that's not a bad idea, especially for fucking personnel quarters. No, well, that's a good idea. Let's see it. Everything there is moving at the same time. Why? Why? Let's look at a real pressurized door. That's it, dude. That is a pressurized door. That's it. Once again. That's it. That's all. All you have to do is put hinges on one side, and a motor in the middle. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on in this animation? What the fuck? What the fuck? Why? What is it exactly? Remote mining colony. It is a remote mining colony. Most certainly a trip hazard too. So this guy knows that what he's doing is bad. <laughs> Let's ignore what he calls it, because mining colonies are just towns where people live, where the majority of them happen to work in a mine. So whatever, maybe this is off-world. But if that's the case, there are rails here. Right on this, this is a rail. That's a railing. And you can scroll down and see what's on the other side of the railing. <gasps> nothing. There's nothing. It's open, it's suspended to the world. The floor is that thick. The floor is that thick. Look at how thick the fucking floor is. It's that thick. Back to the two points. Is there excess material where there shouldn't be? Are there gaps in vital places? So look at this, look at this ramp. Yeah, you know, it kind of slopes over here to meet it. Yeah, he, he kind of put a little thing down here to, to bridge the two, right? But why is it five fucking feet thick? Why is the whole thing... Look at how fucked that is! Why does the rail stop there? I, I don't have an example of a mining colony. Sci-fi fucking mining colony. Like this. Anywhere that was done right. But let's just bring up the cop-out, you know? Let's think here. What's unnecessary? 
find something unnecessary about this. Find any vital gaps in this. These walls are still cushiony. It's all, you can walk around the whole thing. It is zero gravity, so there's no, you wouldn't be walking, <laughs> but you would be bumping into the walls all the time. So everything is soft. The door just fits a human and it doesn't have a thousand moving parts. The less moving parts, the better. Here, it's got a screen, it's got a menu, it's got functional buttons. Remember when this was made, they didn't have digital touch screens that we have. So this is a great solution for that. I've gotten the points across that I wanted to make. Those are, is there unnecessary excess material? Are there gaps in vital areas where there should be material? Considering that this is a pressurized area, there are way the hell too many holes connecting the what looks like the pressurized room that the robot comes from and the unpressurized room that it enters. There's no proof that this area behind him is an airlock and it would be a huge volume of space to pump. There's way too much room for error with all of those moving parts. It looks like he's trying to make redundancies all over the place, but if you keep on adding redundancies, you're also going to keep on adding unnecessary moving parts that add complexity and difficulty in repair and maintenance and higher likelihood of failure. And everything that's said can be said about the robot. And even functional parts of the robot are completely unfunctional. Like these motors don't move. Uh, these cameras are only on one side, unless this thing there is a camera. But even then, it's got way too much obstructed vision. And it's got these gigantic, very, very important cables that are just exposed to the world. It's also way too bulky. It doesn't have to be this bulky. It could be connected to some terminal or some system of the colony that calculates everything and sends it back to the robot in real time. And it wouldn't move like that. <laughs> I could make my version, but it would take forever. I might. I might. Whatever. Those are the points. I think I made them all. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. The sci-fi look sucks. You want a good sci-fi look? Fucking look at 2001. Tight, tight.